The television's most moving event. I think he said most beloved comedian, right. Tracy Ullman. Or else he said most expensive dogs. I said witness one of television's most moving events. Well, on later. For any otherwise, things are mainly on the dry side. God is my witness. I thought turkeys could fly. WKRP cranks out the last. From New York, a rundown subdivision of hell. It, and now, a man who claims to support the idea of lip service, Dave. Kids, ladies and gentlemen, moms and dads, boys and girls, and kids of all ages, before we officially kick off tonight's program, let me, let me just tell you a thought that came to my mind a few moments ago. We now are not officially affiliated with the circus. Is that right, Morty? We have no... Paul, will you back me up on this? We have no affi official affiliation That's with, right. with the circus. There is no, no there is no tangible connection between this production nightly and the circus. However, no. we do feel that you are now watching the greatest show on earth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> occasionally, we get the occasional circus person in the audience, however. There he is. How do you do, sir? Nice to see you. Uh, come down there and turn your lights out, punk. Uh, kids, also, before we begin tonight, I want to take a second here to pass along a special message to all the older people watching the show. Hello, older people. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, you seem to me like you're in an extra, or as we say in Indiana, extra good mood. <laughs> Let's try to minimize the extraneous hooting. Now, uh, is it tomorrow is Valentine's Day? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Let me explain to you a little custom we have here in New York City if we have visitors from other parts of the United States. If you find yourself tomorrow on a subway train and somebody rubs up against you, he's your Valentine. Ladies and gentlemen, according to U.S. military intelligence, I just uh, was walking past the newsroom and Tom Brokaw came out and he had this little sheet of paper. U.S. military intelligence indicates that Saddam Hussein is still, they believe now, 99% certain of this, that he is still in his bunker. However, they also believe that his mustache has fled to Libya. Hey, is this our show? Seriously, is that it right there? Yeah. On the program there without socks in a couple of minutes. <laughs> because, and, and I can't explain to you electronically how that happens, but this show is gwine to knock your socks off. Oh, hey. Okay, okay. Are, are, are you people really that interested in this group? I have a security problem with the band. <laughs> don't don't make any sudden moves. I think you got an extra guy back you, there. Well, well, we do, as Just a matter of fact. Over the, oh, there he is, right there! That man, David, that man is John. Wow. Is, is this for me? Go inside. Oh, that's nice. It's a little travel alarm clock. Thank you very much. <laughs> No, I'd say it's a harmonica, and we'll, uh, we'll jam a little later. Uh, you know... <laughs> These dog dogs we have... Now, let's go up into the audience, because tonight we're going to be playing with audience members Brush with Love and Romance. Paul? There we go.
Play Rock, wasn't it? You know, as I was coming into the audience to play a Brush with Love and Romance, a young man seated on the aisle does this. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate the sentiment, sir. Uh, okay, now, as I understand it, uh, various audience members are going to uh, tell of little episodes in their life of love and romance. Here we go. Do you, uh, did we establish what you do for a living? Uh, yeah, I'm a traffic manager. Traffic manager for what? For Funk and Wagnalls. For Funk. Oh, come on, now you're lying. You're just, you're just lying. I mean, Funk and Wagnalls traffic. What the hell kind of traffic would they have there? What? You sitting in the parking lot with cones yeah, all day? No, I don't. Come you're on. lying, Nancy. But we're gonna let you play anyway. Uh, Nancy, tell us about your uh, brush with love and romance. Um, all right. Go right ahead. Um, it was our first anniversary, my boyfriend and I. What's his name? Chuck. Chuck, nice guy. Oh, hi, it's, Chuck. Nice to right. see you. Hey, let me tell you something, Chuck. Getting a good look at you now. You're lucky to have her with you. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you and Chuck celebrating your anniversary. Right, and he told me he was going to take me someplace special for right. our first anniversary. Very nice. And he blindfolded me. Whoops. And... <laughs> Chuck, you low-life weasel. <laughs> and uh, he blindfolded me, and I thought we were going out for a nice romantic of dinner someplace. You did. Sure. And I take the blindfolds off, and we're at the Meadowlands racetrack. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> yes, sir. It's a vote of confidence from the crowd now. Nancy, is is there more to this story? Yeah, there All is. All right, let's hear okay. the rest of the story. Um, I reminded him of his promise to show me the delights of Manhattan, and he blindfolded me once again, and before I knew it, we were having a lovely picnic under the bus ramp at Port Authority. Oh, my. What do we have for uh, Nancy here, uh, Bill? Mayonnaise. Your own mayonnaise. Thank you very much. Happy Valentine's Day. Nice somebody in the trunk of a rental car and Chuck will be tied into it somehow. <laughs> is there a... I'm a chiropractor. Chiropractor. Oh, now, uh, is this uh, on the level you actually help yeah, people? With, and yeah, what is yeah. the principle there? You go in there and you straighten their spine? Yep, exactly. Uh -huh. Do you put them into a trance or anything? Uh, no, no. We lay them down on the table and uh, we try and straighten out their backs. Is there any undressing? Uh, sometimes. Ooh, really? <laughs> Uh, all right, Harlan, tell us about your uh, brush with love and romance. Get ready. Here. Well, a uh, friend of mine here set up a date with two women, and uh, we went out on the date. And after double date, you're talking about? Double, double date. date. All right. And an hour into the date, we knew it was going to be a bomb. How, how did you know? What was the signal? Uh, they basically didn't want to talk to us after mm -hmm. about an hour. A, a bomb for who, Harlan? Them or you? <laughs> yeah, see, it works both ways, doesn't it? That's right. It takes me to point that kind of thing out. <laughs> All right, Harlan, so get on with the story. Is there so, more to this? So, uh, we decided, yeah, we decided to call it an early night, but uh -huh. we knew that they, we, they just couldn't wait to get alone to talk about it. Right. So, we took them to a, uh, a place where we could pick up some hamburgers, and my friend and I went out to get the hamburgers, but we had a tape recorder underneath the front seat of the oh car. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Now, now, is there more to the story, Harlan? Yes, there is. Okay, uh, right. When we listened to the tape more closely, the voices seemed eerily familiar. Uh -huh. Sure enough, those, those two are the real voices behind Millie Vanilli. <laughs> Give him his mayonnaise. Just give him his mayonnaise. Thank you, Harlan. I see we're letting the audience write their own embellishments. <laughs> Amish country there? Well, close. Darn yeah. close. Pennsylvania Dutch. Did you, you ever go over there and look at them? Well, my grandmother was Your Pennsylvania Dutch. Amish. Well, well Pennsylvania not Amish. Dutch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's fascinating. All right, now, uh, Beth, tell us about your, uh, what are we calling this, brush with love and romance? Well, it was uh, my first date in high school, and it was a group how, how date. How old were you, like uh, 15, About 14? 15, okay. 15. I all was right. real nervous. Sure. And we all went out in a bunch. We went bowling, mm -hmm. and I have no idea how to bowl, and I was real nervous. My date was keeping score behind me, and right. I got up. I had the ball in my hand. I pulled back like this real fast, and it flew and smashed him in the knee. Oh, man! <laughs> and he was on the track team. Oh, no. So, so uh, did he get over this injury? Eventually. He never talked to me again. But oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and is there more to the story there, Beth? Why, yes, Dave, there is. Okay. My next date... <laughs> Millie Vanilli in this one. 
My next date was pitching horseshoes with a brilliant scientist who was very close to developing a life-saving vaccine. Uh -huh. Just call me Butterfingers, but he's now resting comfortably and blowing bubbles in his apple juice. Uh, well, this. Oh, yeah, we have a, a canister of mayonnaise. Thank you very much, Beth Knight. Furniture available soon here at NBC. You did. I couldn't figure out what you were talking also, about. Also, listen to this. You might be able to get a really good deal on a page uniform pretty soon. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Really? <laughs> that's what I hear. That's right. It, no, don't worry, kids. You're all right. It's not you. It's not you pages. It's other pages somewhere else, like in the western part of the world. <laughs> You're fine. You get a job for life here. But, Paul, if you have people who might look good in a page uniform, get your bed uh, in early now. This totally mystifies me. Oh, uh, you know what I'm sick and tired of? You know, I don't know that New York City is the greatest city in the world anymore. I mean... Every time I come to work, there's a guy taking a leak. Now, can, can that be the greatest city in the world? Don't you think the instance of this happening has increased over the last five years? I've seen it a few times myself. Yeah, right here in Midtown. Yeah, yeah. It's, and I guess it's everywhere, isn't it? Just a guy well, taking like a leak. in between well, two buildings, you'll see a guy with his back turned towards you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it certainly is a pleasant sight, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, let's do our top ten list here and then get on with the big uh, program. I bet you, you and I and uh, Beth Bennett from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, could drive around all day in Bethlehem, never once see a guy taking a leak. <laughs> is that right, Beth? Absolutely. See, there you go. So what, right. what's happening here? What is going wrong here? Can't understand it. I Am I making you nervous for this topic? <laughs> Would you rather I just moved on? Kind of enjoying it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you smell uh, something funny, by the way? Here we go. <laughs> Top 10 reasons CNN let the... By the way, did I tell you, I read nine newspapers every day. You do. Thank you very much. And I'm, think, I'm thinking about ad making it an even 10. Nine newspapers every day. What I are read, you? Yeah, I'm, I'm a news junkie. Are you some yeah, kind of I news read junkie? everything I get my hands on. You but right crazy. as it stands now, I read nine newspapers a day. you read every article all the way through or just the top couple Here we go. Ways. Top 10 right. reasons uh, CNN let the Iraqis use their phone lines. Oh, big controversy about this. You know, Peter Arnett, uh, now it's, uh, the revelation is uh, that perhaps the uh, Iraqis were uh, using CNN phone really? equipment. Is that yeah, true? Yeah, that the CNN let them use the phones because all of the other lines in and out of Baghdad were, were uh, busted, blown up. Top ten reasons now CNN let the Iraqis use their phone uh, lines. This so, I got to hear. Yeah, this will be insightful yeah, right here. Let's hear this. Uh, number ten, the Iraq told them they had never used a football phone before. <laughs> Uh, number nine, needed to call 911, report a lot of mysterious explosions in the neighborhood. Number eight. The Iraqi guy told Peter Arnett he just wanted to show him how to play CNN theme on touch-tone buttons. Uh, number seven, to call 970-VAIL. Number six. It's quite a show tonight. We got quite a show tonight. Uh, number six, trying to win Bon Jovi tickets by being 100th caller to Radio Baghdad. Uh, number five, wanted to talk to Time Life operator Susie. Number four, <laughs> the foreman of Iraqi baby milk factory had to place a rush order for pacifiers from Germany. Uh, oh, uh, you're going to love this one. <laughs> if you like that stuff about guys taking a leak, well, this is right up your alley. I uh, thought it was a funny idea to call Baghdad Airport and have them page Dick Hertz. Number two. just gets better and better every night, doesn't it? The, uh, the, the winner of tonight's Noel Coward Award goes to Dick Hertz. There you are. Uh, let's see. Number two, Iraq promised to use Sprint and get big savings over AT&T. But when the bill came, where were the big savings? I mean, I thought it was a typo. If you switch from AT&T, it's easier than ever to come back. Number one, uh, reason uh, CNN let the Iraqis use their phone lines, hoping to screw Domino's out of free pizza. Can't come, come on down. Are we a little late? Are we a little late? All right. You know why we're late? I spent a little extra time reading those nine newspapers today. Uh, that's why we're a little late. Let's bring out our first guest. Lovely, lovely, talented. Ah. Fabulous, marvelous. Hysterical. Yeah. Young. 
Howdy. Hello. How what are you? What do you say in Indiana? I say, hello. <laughs> hello. What do, you, what do you say in Great Britain? Watcha. Yeah, there you go. Oh, blimey. Of Watcha. Course. So, uh, you're being very schmoozy. He's very nice to me tonight, isn't he? Cool. How you doing? <laughs> hey, I'm just fine. Yeah, now you? let's, uh, you want to talk about your play? This is a very exciting thing. What, this Here is coming to Broadway? Broadway. Big theater, big Broadway, big love. I got big breasts and a big butt. It's a good part. You got to come. Forget about the war. Come and enjoy yourselves. This is my character. Yeah. Isn't it unfortunate the CNN logo for the, the Gulf War is like Third Reich? Really? Have you notice it's that same well, orange German it's, it's lettering. Menacing. Ooh, it's yeah, menacing, it's, menacing. It's warlike, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's scary, it's uh, imposing, it's threatening. Yeah. Uh, so, now, you, hey, you tried out the big play in uh, Miami. Yes. Uh, how, what was to, that like? Uh, I spent two months in Florida. People would leave the theatre, these old people, they come on respirators down there. <laughs> they go down there to die, Dave, and they make them go to the theatre. Well... I mean, you see these little old women, they're like... 85 years old, and they're in their little AT&T business suits, you know, and they get there, they get in the theatre, they sit down, they go... <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking like two people asleep yeah, in the theatre. Right. On that, I'm talking like 23 in the first 10 rows, and some fella on a respirator. <laughs> I mean, I know it's that. And I'm trying to do this sensitive, you know, one-woman piece. It's a nightmare. <laughs> and then some old fella's leaving the theatre, and he said to his wife, well, I'll say one thing for it. It was time-consuming. Uh -huh. <laughs> Don't bloody come! Uh, Eating their little knishes out in the foyer, they come in, they got a nice big hot knish in their tummy, yeah. and they go asleep. Is, uh, <laughs> is this discouraging to you? A yes, bloody discouraging! Yeah. But I understand the play, nonetheless, got very good reviews, and, and people did. enjoyed it quite it's well. It's a good piece. Tell us what it is. Well, Dave... It's, um, it's about, I'll tell ya, fella. It's about the girl right. who was 15 who had an affair with Errol Flynn. Do you remember who Errol Flynn was for the last two years of his life? And her mother wrote a book about it called The Big Love. Her mm -hmm. mother was called Flo. And she's originally from Texas. She had an artificial foot, which she called The Tragedy of My Foot. And it's about, it's her story. <laughs> and how Beverly is just so wonderful and Errol took her to meet Prince Ali Khan, and he says, show her your panties, Woodsy. And she showed him her fuchsia panties. So it's a disgusting, vulgar stuff. No. And this book was voted number one in the basic library of trash. So I picked up on it, obviously. No, but I understand it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting story. It is, yeah. I mean, it's a great sort of social document of uh -huh. American mentality. It's yeah. very funny. Uh, do you, you know, so remember Errol Flynn, his counterpart today, I suppose, is Arnold Schwarzenegger or Mel Gibson, you know. <laughs> uh, so, and how old was Mr. Flynn when he had this dalliance? He's 48. It was the last two years of his life. And, 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 and Flo, the girl? Flo would look at him and say, he's almost prime, he's gorgeous. And there's this guy, you know, with no liver, sort of. I mean, he looked absolutely awful. And, and, and the little girl that was 15 years old? Yeah, uh, yeah Beverly was 15. And but she looked is... like 21. She's yeah. one of those real jailbait numbers, Dave. And, you know, and... she's like... 12 years old, she's like this, you know. And this was all okay by the mother? Oh, yeah, sure. This is the big love. Yeah. He loved her. She's beautiful. Uh. She's talented. He's gorgeous. Big, big time movie star, David. And You're going to love the show. Big love, big butt, big breasts, okay? Am I pogging it enough? <laughs> well, why didn't you just call it big butt, then? <laughs> Instead of big love, let's, That's a good let's idea. get right down That's to it. That's a good idea. Where it on have the we moved the cameras again? Where? Th oh, here they are. We'll do a commercial. The whole thing. This is a, a, an amazing undertaking. I know. Well, I do like 50 minutes first act, 45 minutes second act. Wow. You know, anything longer than 90 minutes, you're going to get a sore bum. You know what I mean? That's my a husband, lot of work for my you, husband, though. when he goes to the theatre, Dave, he's so embarrassing. He rolls his program up and starts looking at the ceiling. He's one of those guys, you know. <laughs> What's the matter oh, with him? Cupid's up there. He's just a twit, then, is what you're saying. <laughs> he can be. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, 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 all around there. Yeah, sorry. Now, um, did you bring, you had the family with you uh, in Miami. Mabel did you bring came it, to Miami. Ever, and she come up uh, to New York with you? It's your baby girl, right? When she came to Miami, she's on the airplane, right? And the air hostess is doing the, the exits are being pointed out to you now. And Mabel called her over and she went, you were marvelous. <laughs> you really were. <laughs> but the nasty thing is, we think she's getting sarcastic now because the woman's like, oh, yeah, sure, honey. She's one of the older hostesses, you know. <laughs> Spent a lot of hours How old is Mabel? 
Mabel's nearly five. And when did so she like... meet? Uh, when did she meet uh, uh, Jane Fonda? <laughs> yeah, was that on a, a flight as well? Oh yeah, we're on a plane with Jane Fonda, and Jane Fonda was telling me about. Uh, well, I'm going to uh, Czechoslovakia. I want to meet all these people. She's telling me about her Eastern European trip. And, and Mabel said to her, you're boring. <laughs> Do you know when your kid does something so embarrassing? She went, oh, shut up. You're boring. So Jane Fonda went, oh, well, you're boring too. Right. And Mabel said, no, Mommy, she's really boring. It's like, get off the plane, you little cow. <laughs> I think one of the classic, you get her in the terminal, it's the back of the knees job. Do you know when they cave under you like that? Yeah. You did that to Jane Fonda? No, not Jane Fonda. <laughs> Just completely, I don't know, can't get anything right. I'm just completely. Oh, it was horrifying, horrifying. Maybe uh, says some horrifying things. What is the big show open? The big love, the big show. <laughs> um, next week, start previews. Yeah. We'll heat the theater up. Come along. Be is, good uh, is it, um, it must be exciting and challenging and certainly uh, rewarding for you as a performer, but does it also make you kind of long for your old uh, TV show? <laughs> I miss the TV show, but I, I, it's nice to do something more than like for oh, seven yeah. minutes. Yeah. I miss, it's, it's odd living in L.A. Yeah. and not like doing a show there because it's a bit tough to live there. That's right. Do you see yourself ever coming back to television? I'm sure you'll do something else, right? I'm sure I will, like an Arsenio Hall show type thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of excitement. Did you, did you see the, uh, the Lucille Ball thing on CBS Sunday night? No. Was yeah. it a bit classy? Yeah, he loves it. Yeah, love this now listen, TV, listen what happened. I turned it on and I'm watching 10 minutes of it. The set turned itself off. <laughs> It was, it was that bad. Yeah, the set just said, no, no, we're not going to... You know gonna... what I'm watching now? I like the muscle-building contests on ESPN. Me and Mabel like watching those. We like the commentary. It's yeah. so stupid. Hey, she's really packing some lats there, Dan. <laughs> I mean, she's got a nice mesh. She's a little soft on her glutes, and I felt the switch from the Paula Abdul music to the Billy Joel was a little shaky, but it's so dumb. It's, it's big so competition. Dumb. They have associations. They compete all over the world. And then they, they interview the, the girls. They go, how you feel? Yeah. Well, I had a lot of pineapple and tuna, and I feel real great. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, paper, TV. The big, uh, the big love uh, show. Would you like? Cause uh, I'm having a baby. Oh, congratulations! <laughs> Good to see you again, Tracy Ullman. <laughs> we do that because you did that while, during the commercial. Paul, tell him what I was doing during the commercial. Reading a newspaper. That's exactly. <laughs> that is shocking. Uh, yes. And also, you. you yeah, I read all my mail. I read endless memos. And I'm thinking to add in a couple other newspapers. What the hell happened? Did you get shocked? I got shocked. Do you have your rubber shoes on? No, I, I forgot my rubber shoes. I touched this and this. Uh, later on the program, children, and wake them up, because in a couple of minutes, we'll have magic dogs <laughs> on the program. Uh, tomorrow on the show. Okay, well, do we have time for this or not? Do we have time for this? Okay. Paul, how do you feel? Feel fine. Ready? Yeah. Relaxed? Yes, absolutely. Confident? Sure. Happy? Ready to All right. go. I'll put up the clock. Here we go. Calories in a three-ounce piece of bluefish. Uh, 135. Correct. A single-masted fore and aft rig sailing boat with one head sole set from the forestay. Uh, sloop. Correct. Band member, you're about to fire. Uh, Sid. That's right. <laughs> Canadian province that is the most fun to pronounce. Uh, Manitoba. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it's Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. How badly has the Iraqi Republican Guard been damaged by the Allied bombing? I'm sorry, I cannot answer that question at this time. Okay. If there were a McDonald's on Jupiter, what would be the big selling item? Uh, McMethane. Correct. Which is better, being Lutheran or Presbyterian? Presbyterian. That's right. <laughs> Tallest building in Akron, Ohio? Uh, First National Tower. That's right. Tallest building in Boise? Uh, 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 giant potato building. Uh, you just made that up. Finally, the boiling point of pudding. Uh, 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, congratulations. 80 points. Very nicely done. Thank you so much. You know, that's a pretty good score. 80 points. Yeah, nice yeah. going. Yeah. yeah All right. Just... Okay, we'll, uh, we'll do a break. We'll be right back. That's uh, indoor-outdoor, yeah, isn't it? it's not bad, is it? It's lovely yeah, stuff, right. yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, we now have some uh, dogs who competed in this year's uh, Westminster Kennel Club show at Madison Square Garden. These may or may not be the winners in their class, but ladies and gentlemen, we like to think of them as being magic. <laughs> yeah, you know. All right, let's see. Hi, how are you? Uh, is, that, is, is that right? Is it, is it uh, Ozawaki, Kansas? No, it's Ozaki. Ozaki, Kansas. I'm very sorry. And uh, what kind of bird do you have here? Yeah. <laughs> do you, do you, what, yeah, I know. Do you want to put, uh, put him up there? Is this a boy or a girl it's dog? A girl. Uh -huh. and, and what, what category? This is a chihuahua, right? This is the smallest right? dog there is. The smallest dog there is. And it's a... Uh, uh, um, Long this, coat chihuahua. Long coat chihuahua. And, and what do they look for when they're judging this breed? Oh, a nice top line, good legs, good mm -hmm. nose, mm -hmm. head. 
And a lovely yeah. skirt. Look at that, will you? Oh, my goodness. Uh, have to dress up. Of course, of course we have to dress up. Now, is is there something about this breed that is specifically bred for, a characteristic that oh, might be... In ancient times, they believed that it was good for people with asthma, and they still do. Oh, oh really? Yes, and, and the cold. And, and how, how would you treat the asthma? Sleep with them. So, oh, sleep with the dogs? Yeah. Oh, okay. And did you guys win anything this year? We got best of opposite. Best of? Opposite sex. Best of opposite sex. Because the boy went first. Oh, I, I see. You have... <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, fine. What, what, whatever, I know, whatever you people do there knows Zaki is your business, I don't know. All right, well, thank you very much, Redona, see, Ramona. I have a dress for you to you see. You have a dress for me to oh, see. Well, yes, we okay. we have to go out on the challenge tonight. All right, putting on a dress now. Morty, she's putting on a dress. All right, okay. Oh, that's nice. It's a, a lot like the red one, isn't it? <laughs> It's similar to the red one. Okay, Give Ramona. It's very, very nice. Thank you, Ramona. Thanks for bringing your dog. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, we're a little late. Yeah. We're all right. Are you going to stand over there, Ramona? Is that all right? Can she stand over there? Uh, Linda Mowens from... My goodness. Well... Well, honey, let me get you a tissue. <laughs> what kind of animal is that? This is a bronze Newfoundland. Uh-huh. And do they always slob like that? Could we have some? Thank you very much. We're okay. Yeah, We're you got it? Yeah. yeah. And, and th these are water dogs, aren't they? Water dogs and draft dogs, uh, yes. What does that mean, draft dogs? Well, they pull carts. <coughs> oh, they do? Yes, really do? they can earn draft titles pulling carts. Is he, is he a sweet doggy? Yes, he is. Oh, my goodness. How much does he weigh? Oh, about 130 pounds. Will he get bigger than this? No, he won't. Uh, how old is he now? Four years old. Four years old. Next week. Right. And did he win anything? No, he didn't. Oh, he didn't. Does he know he didn't win anything? I didn't tell him. <laughs> the poor bastard doesn't even know. <laughs> Man, can I, now, can I pick up one of his feet? Can we look at these feet here? Wow, look at the size of this. This is a massive animal. Sit. And is he good? To, uh, do you have him as a pet and everything? Yes, he's a house dog. Yeah, and he stays in the house? Yeah, yeah good for you. Well, thank you very much for bringing Dutch around. He's a beautiful animal. Nice to meet you. to try on one of her dresses. <laughs> Are we a little late? Well, I know we're a little late. Uh, is there a... Good to see you. Jacksonville, Florida. This is your dog, Titan. And what kind of animal is this? He's a curly-coated retriever. A curly-coated retriever. New from M&M's. It's the oldest, oldest retrieving breed there is in the nation. Now, it in says, the world. says here he's crossbred with a poodle. Well, he was... Bred to, with a poodle uh, a long time ago to tighten up his curls. Uh -huh. but, uh... <laughs> I've tightened some curls that way myself. <laughs> uh, and and he's a, this is a handsome animal, isn't Thank he? Thank you. He's yeah. number one curly in the nation. Well, good for you. And to give my best to Mo and Larry. Now. <laughs> but... Originally, what, what is the purpose of this? Is a working dog? Uh, what this is a sporting dog. It's sporting a dog. gentleman's hunting dog in Europe and uh, England yeah. and Australia. They're very, very popular mm -hmm. on the good, continent. Good temperament? Disposition. Excellent temperament. Yeah. You know, I've never, I've never seen one of these before. Very unusual looking dog. Hi, baby. Hi. This is Titan, right? Titan. Well, Champion pleasure to meet you. Titan. Thank you very much for bringing him around, John. John Mello and Titan. Kids, this is... Uh, oh! James Ryan. <laughs> James Ryan. And uh, Alice Lawrence. Hi, Alice. Hi. Oh, man. <laughs> Alice, nice to see you. Thank nice you very much. You well, what is this exactly? This is a Hungarian Commodore. Hun Hungarian Commodore. Right. Wow, man. Alive. And this is where you get the Hungarian carpets we love so well. <laughs> Uh, and you, sir, are James Ryan. Ryan. And what kind of dog is this? This is a bloodhound. Oh, my. Hi. Nice to see you. This is Boz? This is Bosworth. James okay, James I tell you, we, uh, we have to do a commercial, and then uh, we'll be right back. Is Leo, champion snow coats of Leo. Yeah. Le Leo, have you seen my car keys anywhere? <laughs> uh, my thanks to everybody.